Hello, in this new video series, we're going to do chapter by chapter summary of this new book, Macroeconomics, Policy and Practice by Frederick Mishkin, second edition. So every video, we will do one chapter summary of the key learnings that I took out of this book. So the first chapter is the policy and practice of macroeconomics. So how can macroeconomics help us with policy decisions? Questions like, is the savings of the country too low? Are the people in the country saving less money? How can we help poorer countries get rich? How can we increase their per capita income? How can we increase the standard of life and living for those people? Does government deficit matter? Like, is it okay for countries to borrow money? And is it okay for them to buy more of goods and services from other countries than sell, selling those goods and services? So, it's, so is it okay to have that imbalance? There are lots of myths, lots of decisions that economics helps us with, especially macroeconomics helps us with. And these are some of the questions that, that it can help us with. How costly is it to reduce inflation? If I buy, let's say, an iPhone today for a couple of hundred dollars and tomorrow it becomes $2,000. Is it good? Is it bad? If it reduces prices, is it good? Is it bad? How can we prevent financial crisis? Which the one, the last one we had was in 2008. Is that normal? Does it happen often? Should the policies that countries adopt be more active or passive? Should they just let unemployment happen, which we just faced in 2020? It, um, unemployment went through the roof. What did the governing bodies do to deal with that? So these are decisions that if we have a good understanding of macroeconomics, we can make some of these decisions in an educated way. And how does, how does one about, go about making those decisions is by looking at these three data points. So practicing macroeconomics involves looking at these three major data points. It's not 10, it's just three. Real GDP, real GDP. Unemployment rate, GDP is gross domestic product. Unemployment rate is uh, the percentage people that are unemployed. And inflation, how costly are the goods and services getting over time? So the way we do this is we, we build theories and model to explain the data that we are seeing and we improvise. We improvise until our model and theories can actually tell us and that the data that we have, it actually can predict that data. So that's the practice of macroeconomics. And it's an iterative process. Macroeconomics is an iterative process where we develop models and improvise it until it can actually explain the data that we already observe in the country and we keep making improvements, raise new questions, make the model better, and advance our knowledge. And our biggest friend, I think it's gonna be the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It, it's, uh, it publishes data and does extensive work in the United States to publish all of these three data points. GDP, unemployment rate, inflation. So this site, bls.gov, it's going to be our new friend in this in this subject. So I took some of the recent data points to make some of these concepts real. So unemployment rate, when we went through this pandemic, look at this one. We were close to 4% steady, and then it shot up 16%, 15%, 16%. That is huge. Look at this. Now, this is just one year, but now look at this for the last 10 years. 20 years, in the recession, the Great Recession, uh, the financial crisis, it was at 10%, but look at this peak. It went up to 15, that is massive. And it came down as this sharply because of the policies, the decisions that macroeconomics helps us, right? So they took decisions to add money into the market, get more people incentives to work, get them paid so that they could take care of themselves so that there's no structural damage that happens. 
So unemployment rate, it's a rate because it's over a period of time and it's on a point in time. Percentage of workers looking for work but who do not have jobs today. And they do this every month. They publish this data every month on bls.gov. Inflation rate tells us how rapidly the overall levels of prices are rising. Look at this, right? This is the latest from December 19 to December 20. And this, all of this I got from bls.gov. Uh, and it can tell you by item, like used cars and trucks, you know, actually got costlier. Airline tickets at the bottom, minus 20%, right? Gasoline, cheaper. Um, and it, it tells you overall whether it was positive or negative. Positive inflation, the CPI um, that we have today is 2%. But the key intuition behind inflation is to remember that inflation adds uncertainty. If you're trying to make a decision as a consumer, or if you're trying to make a decision as a business owner to build a new plant, and suddenly you realize that the oil prices are going up, food prices are going up, and let's say you're trying to build a pizza shop, right? If you build a pizza shop, and if all of your raw materials are going up, like in this case, the food price is going up, and you needed cars and trucks to deliver, it goes up, then that uncertainty is bad. Decision making is hampered. People don't take risks when there is higher uncertainty and inflation is that uncertainty factor. Um, so this is huge to understand this is quite critical. So overall goal for macroeconomics policies is to determine what policies can produce better macroeconomic outcomes. The government acted, the Federal Reserve in 2020, when they saw the pandemic, they acted, they cut rates, and we learn a lot about all of these decisions and how it's helping unemployment go back up, how it's helping people survive, how it's reducing structural damages. And in a sense, like if you increase the savings, then you increase investments. The more you can save, the more you can invest. Same is true for the country. Higher the savings, higher the investments. Higher the investments, higher the economic output. When the economic output is higher, you're producing more than consuming, then you are growing. Your gross domestic product is higher. But is that true? The United States has had declining savings, but it has still had higher investments, higher economic output, and the GDP continues to grow. Why is that? So we'll find out more hopefully in the upcoming chapters as to why is the US with lower investments and the invest and the savings have been going down, why is it its GDP constantly just going up? And there are different types of policies. Fiscal policy deals with taxes. Like should the you know the Trump government cut taxes on companies? That was a huge, huge positive for helping those companies reinvest, right? So fiscal policies deals with taxes. How much tax? Should we increase taxes? Should we reduce taxes? And when, when the taxes go up, savings goes down. Saving goes down, investment goes down. Taxes go down, investments go up. But at the same time, taxes are also part of government savings and the government spending comes from tax money. So how do you balance the two? That is another important part. Monetary policy deals with interest rates. The Federal Reserve, they take care of like how much money should be in the market, what should be the interest rate for, um, for the country. Stabilization policy deals with minimizing those business cycles. So every so often we see uh, the GDP contracting a little. Right? We, the last time we saw this in 2008, and we've seen this again in 2000. So there is this contraction, expansion, contracts and expansion but we've not seen one uh, in terms of uh, contraction for the last 12 years now. Maybe there are stabilization policies at play. So stabilization policies deals with like how active should you be when let's say you see unemployment going up, should you jump in, add more uh, money into the markets by reducing interest rates, lending money to slightly more riskier borrowers. So that's a stabilization policy. Trade deficit, like if you as a country 
are purchasing more goods and services from outside uh, and you're selling them less, then you have a deficit, meaning you have a negative balance. So in a sense, right, in a sense, macroeconomics helps us better understand the world, the world that we live in. And, and what it also enables us with options, like what, what, what are our own options? Where should you invest? Where should you park your savings? You've spent a lot of time, hard earned money. Where should you park it? Should you be buying a treasury? Should you be buying bonds? Should you be buying house or should you not be buying a house? Should you be taking a loan or should you be paying it from your pocket? Is the inflation expected to rise? And so all of those things helps us to better understand the economy. And we, we understand this by building better models and iteratively improving our models. So I'm looking forward to learning more about how to better understand how the economic works. Thanks.